Tow Road here with Skid Row. Skid Row and Butcher Fritz. And we're investigating the uh, story of the Owl Man of Oxford, Ohio. But strangely enough, our story begins in uh, College Corner, Indiana, outside of Grandma's Fireworks. And legend has it in the early 2000s, there was a couple of young couple here going in to get some uh, fireworks from the grandmas. And the female had a piece of uh, chicken in her hand and an entire parliament of owls came down. Uh, one swooped down and, and took the chicken and her boyfriend tried to like shoo the owl away. And the uh, second or third owl came down and, and got him in back of the neck with, with a talon and scraped up his neck. Um, didn't do too much harm, but there was uh, there was rumors to be like 15, 20 owls, and, and I think that tree right over there is where they saw a lot of them coming down on. Uh, real hard to find information on this particular story, though, but got any uh, intake on this there, uh, road trip? No, well, not really. I haven't heard of it. Heard of it. It's a very interesting story. Um, you say it happened in what, 2003? Uh, early 2000s, yeah, that's as best as I could find. Man. But the real interesting thing was when after, you know, he gets scratched in his neck and whatever, one of the uh, older ladies, I don't know if it was one of the grandmas or not, came out with a Roman candle and was firing at him allegedly and uh, scared the owls away. So that was the beginning and the first sighting of some weird owl activity in the uh, greater Oxford, Ohio area there. Here at the site of CD-78, which stood for the Cincinnati Defense System, which this is actually part of the Nike missile program that was supposedly protecting the Dayton, Cincinnati region from attack from the Soviet Union. This ran from the 60s till about 70, 71, and now this is part of uh, Miami University. But there was talk that Rich had heard about with the radar that a lot of people speculated. That's why what they were found a lot of um, dead birds and even some owls in this area around that time. So before the first owl attack, we saw at Grandma the first recorded one in what I say early 2000s but there's evidence this goes back even further than that with the uh, dead birds even though there wasn't a, an attack you know I personally I'm a little bit of a skeptic but there was a uh, missile site right here and there was a lot of, would you say, a lot of dead birds were found around here, Rich? Yeah, a lot of dead birds. This was uh, like 65 or 66. And it's like, uh, I think it was like 10, 15 mile radius where it was just basically dead birds. All of a sudden, you know, all these birds are laying along the road and they just couldn't figure it out. And the other theory we have, which uh, Billy the Skid, Skid Mark looked up, did, did a lot of research over the last couple of weeks on this and apparently currently doing some research. Yeah, just verifying with um, the actual Ohio EPA that um, there's been a lot of contamination on this site and they're still doing research into it of um, spaces used, contaminants in the launcher area are 1, 2, dichloroethane, trans 1, 2, dichloroethane. And they're not very good. And um, vinyl chlorides. So the, the um, groundwater here is not, not good. good. And, and I mean, having all the animals and contaminants of the, the drinking water. Oh, right yeah. And I mean, here's a tree. You obviously can tell the top of it was hit by lightning at one point, it was a much bigger tree. And I'm sure you had some owl action there along with other birds. Oh, one right next to it's dead. Yeah. And I mean, this. That's completely gone right there. And this is all, like I said, we we're at Grandma's Fireworks. I mean, you could almost see it from here over the, this field. College Corner is right over there. About a mile off from the uh, off bird Yeah. 
So we've got uh, theories of contaminated birds on the attack in College Corner. And really that's, that's gonna be the uh, easiest to believe and uh, the less terrifying of the stories. Just wait till we get into Oxford here. So we're now at the Black Covered Bridge. And the story goes, uh, was it around, what was it guys? Two, 2008, 2008 is what we heard. There were three uh, young drunk college kids, much, much like us three. Probably not as good looking. Anyways, they're coming. Yeah, they're coming up this way. They heard like a hoot or a screech up up in this tree here. And being the the wise guys they were, they pick up a rock. There's yeah, a, no rocks anymore. So yeah, they, they the yeah they launched them up, but they they threw a rock up 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 at a uh, the hooting sound, whether it was an owl or whatever. Be careful, Rich. You might hit an owl. They threw a rock up there. And, uh, uh, we're we're funny guys. We uh, cause they, they yeah, <laughs> they stopped it from hooting. So they come up here to the uh, across the black covered bridge. Drunk, they're drunk as can be. Story oh, tells. Bad, yeah, it's Stagger City. And they get to the bridge, and you notice now they got this. Uh, Security notice with the audio and video surveillance in use. Okay, rumor has it this is why, because they didn't believe the story these kids were telling them. And what they wanted to do is, hey, if it, if it happens again, we'll have a little proof. So then right up here in these trees here is supposedly where, we'll just call him the big guy. Yeah. Or allegedly the, uh, somewhere up there, the Oxford owl was lurking. So then the uh, three drunken lads were walking through here. Much give a little demonstration of how these two guys were stumbling into each other. <laughs> ah, screw that old guy. Yeah, stupid owl. <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> uh, and they continued walking up here. What did you, and how did, did you do get back right out here? They got there? up. About, about, about this area here, and they heard something behind them, whether it was like a screech, uh, a hoot, a huge screech, huge screech and uh, facing this way, immediately turned around, and they saw what, what they referred to as an owl man, uh, something about the size of a human being, roughly, and you know, the, the biggest owl in North America is only going to be like two feet tall, you know, yep. great horn, or even a gray owl. So at least two to three times the size of that with a bright orange eyes. So the, so the guys, you know, got their attention a little bit. Holy crap. Yeah, they're stumbling, stumbling in. And, and uh, one of them allegedly, what, grabbed on to here. This, this supposedly, uh, I find this hard to believe, but this is supposed to be where the uh, handprint was, where the guy was reaching on so he grabs onto there he's drunk which you know whatever and uh get to al in front of you the other two guys are like hey well, let's get out of here and they look up and along every one of these beams on the top of them they see orange eyes there was dozens and dozens of, of owls up there so you had your choice run through the gauntlet of owls or face the owl man on the other side. Well, these guys probably picked the, the wise decision and started running through here. And I mean, they were getting pecked and torn apart. And like owls generally, there, there are a lot of recorded owl attacks across the country and, and they'll go for their prey. They'll go for the head and the neck. And you know, owls being a uh, zygodactyl, they'll have, the two uh, talons in front and the one in the back, and they'll they'll try to grab your neck there. And these kids got tore up pretty good. So they they go through here, and and all along here would have been just dripping with blood here. 
which the story was though they they came the next day the authorities and didn't really find any of the blood or anything so that's what makes the story kind of seem suspect but you got three people you know verifying it drunk or not you know yeah, it's, so, something happened to them and they, and they were scratched up and, And that is the uh, first sighting of the actual owl man of Oxford, Ohio. So now we're at the Cradle of Coaches, the home field of the Miami Red Hawks. And this is the site of one of the most alleged brutal attacks of the owl man. Uh, it was 2012, November, late in the season. Uh, the Miami Red Hawks were playing the Temple Owls of all teams. And they actually uh, beat them. And that was a big win for Miami. They were one of the first teams ever to go from like only winning a game, I think the year before, yeah. year before to winning 10 games the next season. And one of their fans was given all kind of holy heck to the mascot in an owl uniform. And unfortunately for him, he got kicked out of the stadium. But even more unfortunate for him, allegedly, where he, where all that went down was visible from the top of this tall tree here. So he's kicked out before the game's over. It's still, you know, people want to watch the end of the game because this is for a, a championship. So he's kind of on his own, comes walking up through this way. Well, he around, don't pay any attention to those two clowns. Gets over here, and this was a, a later game, so, and it's in, uh, I want to say it was late November, so it's probably was pretty dark at that time. Yeah, the day started cold, and I think it warmed up, but he got it right about here, and his story is that he just got jumped. He didn't hear anything coming, which makes sense, because if it is an owl, they're, they're silent when, when they fly. And he said a giant owl flew from that tree and basically beat the living crap out of him right here and uh, knocked him into this grass and rolled down into this creek, which we know the part about the creek is true because he was found there drunk. And so his story didn't hold much weight with the authorities. They just said, okay, here's this drunk, got up to the top of this hill, probably turned around, gave one last middle finger or something, and lost his balance and fell down here and uh, got all scratched up and beat up. But I, I, I'm a skeptic on his story, but some of the injuries that he reportedly had are a little bit more than just falling down this you know there's a lot of grass and stuff here to kind of break your fall you know i there's obviously rocks and stuff there but i don't know if you could have stumbled all the way up there yeah i don't you know why would he uh you know I, okay granted he was drunk but why would he have been all the way up here and falling down there i mean it could have happened but his story was he got attacked by a uh, the owl man of oxford and it kind of makes sense because the Owls did take a beating on that field that day. Here's our next site, and this one has a little bit of similarities to the uh, Owl Man of Corn Cornwall, right? Yep. And basically, that didn't happen in a church, but allegedly. Some of the parishioners at this church, and this was only what two or three years ago, I guess. Or, yep. Our sources Somewhere tell us there, I think. that uh, some of the parishioners heard some screeching sounds, um, and they got one of the uh, I don't know, we call them a custodian or ha handyman, groundskeeper. So, allegedly, he checked around back of the church here and what somewhere exact yeah exact location I from the stuff I heard is probably this corner because of the AC unit but he found a, a couple of 
what do you call baby owls? Owlets? Yep. Baby owls? I don't know. That, uh, some reason were on the ground. It was a pair of them. I don't know if they fell out of this tree or we don't know the exact date, so I don't know if there was a storm or something that uh, knocked them out of their nest. But this tree here is definitely high enough to, uh, big enough to have an owl nest. And he found them and uh, they weren't good shape. And he did what he thought was a humane thing and uh, put them out of their misery. How he did that, that's still up for interpretation. I don't know how brutal it was. But he did that, and uh, what, what the story here, he, he, he went back in and, and got a uh, shovel or something like that. And when he came back around, when he's bent over, this is his story, he was grabbed back of his neck on uh, both shoulder blades and lifted up and placed on the top of this church, dropped up on top of there, rolled down and fell onto this other peak. Now we know somehow he got to that other peak because the next day, next morning, he was up there badly wound, crying for help. And you know, when they came and assisted him down, they asked him what happened. And his story was that a uh, owl-like creature, four to five feet tall, swooped behind him grabbed him and, and carried him up and dropped there. Uh, sounds a little far-fetched, but how the heck else did he get up there? Yeah. I, I don't uh, know. It's like, again, I thought I heard, you know, just like the other stories, a little bit of drinking is involved. I mean, there is a little drinking of, on the job there. Yeah, I, I hate to hear that a church worker do that, but it happens, you know. Yep. I mean, there is that kind of sl slitted window. I don't know if those things open at all. Who knows? He somehow got up there and, and went around. But I tell you what, this is prime owl territory. We got trees all over the place over here. But the thing that didn't, that almost gave a story a little validity was was the uh, marks he had on on both of his shoulder oh, blades like yeah marks yeah that, you know grabbed and it's like i mean he was hurt pretty bad because mm -hmm. otherwise i mean he could have climbed you know, yeah he yeah he was i guess he said he was kind of draped over the uh ledge right right there yeah and if you weren't hurt i mean you could have slid down the side to boy this I, would, I still wouldn't want to do that i i wouldn't uh, even want to yeah. shingle that as a professional yeah I know, but you could have could have slid down i, I don't think i would have spent the night up there no, unless yeah, i had to I mean. It's like then found a way down on this little ledge, so. But yeah, don't know. I'd like to, like to get a hold of the man. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I, I didn't even heard what his name is. We tried okay. to contact the church here, and they didn't want to talk about it. Obviously, I mean, you know, stuff like that. They a lot of places don't want to get involved on on folklore type of stuff. That's probably not true, anyways. But. Yeah. I mean, it, it's true or not, I just found it to be a real interesting story. What gives a little bit of validity to the uh, church story, you see the church is just up here, was that in this area around that time, there were a lot of reports of uh, missing pets, like cats and dogs, small dogs. And they found a lot of the uh, bones of them in this area, like in the woods over here. And even, what did they say? They found a, a, a dog. I guess there was just kind of a skeleton left, a dog, but it still had his uh, collar and collar and his ID and everything on it. And they found many other little tags here and there. Yeah. In this area, which you normally shouldn't. No. Yeah, just tag. Yeah, loose tags weren't even bones with them, but collars. So the final sighting, or the most recent sighting, was early spring, I guess. Summer, right. April, March, April, May, yeah, school wasn't in session here because of the uh, COVID stuff. So apparently the owl man was doing his form of social distancing and allegedly was spotted up by the clock on the corner there, perched overlooking. Now. 
The person who spotted it though was from way over here and he saw a large bird-like creature. So whether it was an owl man or, or just, just a large bird up there. But I'll tell you what, I imagine them bells weren't ringing when he was up there. That would scare even the largest owl man out of here. Are the tales of the owl man of Oxford, Ohio true? And will there be future sightings? You'll have to be the judge of that. That is all for now, and who knows where the toll road will lead to next.